Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And welcome to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. And on this particular video, I'm going to show you how to do an oil change on a 1992 Nissan Patrol, stroke safari, they're both the same, uh, with the 4.2 straight six diesel engine. Now they came in two types, one was the uh, turbo version and one was the normally aspirated and it should be the same really for both both of these two vehicles. Um, this particular engine was fitted um, for a number of years uh, from about 1990 depending on where you are in the, country, in the, in the world um, right through to about 97, 96, 97 I think so there's plenty of them out there and on this particular engine because it's a, almost really a truck engine, it has two oil filters. How cool is that? Two oil filters. And it also takes about 11 litres of engine oil. It's just monstrous for a normal sort of car. But, um, well, it's for me anyway. No idea what those V8s take. Not really worked on V8s. But uh, straight, this great big straight six diesel, 4.2, lots of oil and two oil filters. And being a diesel engine, it's extremely messy. The oil that comes out has been in that engine for quite some time. This is my own truck, by the way. And because of that, it always ends up bottom of the list when it comes to servicing. You may have seen recently I made a back bumper for it and got it through the warrant and put some new tyres on it and things. And uh, it hasn't had an oil change for, well, I'm not going to tell you because it's horrendously bad and you'll think really bad of me. But it's time, well, put it this way. I did a gearbox oil change last week on it. That oil's been in there 10 years and it's done about 400,000 kilometers and it wasn't very nice what came out. And yes, the gearbox works much better now. It's got some fresh oil in. Um, so I thought it was probably about time that I did the engine oil. Now sure, the engine oil hasn't been in for the last 400,000 kilometers. If it had, there wouldn't be an engine there anymore. It'd be a big molten mass of metal but it has been in for a while. So, the vehicle won't fit in the garage, it's too big. Uh, so we're under the carport for this one. And the first job is to drain the old engine oil out. Now, uh, like I said before, the engine oil is, re diesel engine oil, when it's been used, is really nasty stuff. It's full of all sorts of contaminants and carbon and just yeah, lots of nasty chemicals. So. You really, really have to wear the gloves for this job. Um, I can't stress this enough. If you get the oil on your skin, it seems to take bloody ages to get it out of your skin. It's just, oh man, it's just nasty. It's just bad. So, yes, for years I didn't bother and I would go inside on an evening with hands that were absolutely filthy and spend hours with a, well, not hours, but quite a long time with a scrubbing brush trying to get all the, you know, the ingrained dirt out. Just buy some gloves, it's damn sight easier, and then, you know, just chuck them away and put some new ones on when you have to. Um, it's the way it is, you've got to look after yourself. These hands and your hands are very important as a mechanic. Okay, so we're going to head outside, we're going to locate the drain bung on the sump, pretty obvious, and uh, we're going to start draining that oil. Okay, well before you start, just make sure you've got plenty of rags because you're going to need those very shortly. And it's a 22, I think it was one of them. So just make sure you've got no dirt and stuff around that, that drain. We don't want to contaminate anything. There we go. Right, it's all going to happen shortly. Now, like I said, there's uh, going to be an awful lot of oil coming out of here. And I'm not entirely sure it's all going to fit in this one drain, so I brought both of them out just in case. There we go. Okay. One rag. Be quiet. Oh, for a hoist. 
Should have done this at work really. I think we're going to be okay. Right, we'll leave that to finish off draining and let's go and remove the old oil filters. Okay, so you're looking down, sorry, put it a bit loud. Uh, you're looking down from above. Uh, just as if you were looking under the engine bay yourself, that's where I managed to get the camera put. So you've got your air filter on top, the dipstick, you've got the clutch master cylinder just here, and down here we've got the two large, both the same spec, oil filters. So the first thing we can do is get rid of the dipstick. We really don't need that at the moment. And now, using one of these special tools, which, to be honest, are not that great, I had a Sykes pick event one, which had like a steel loop, a steel band, and a big knurling knob. And I can't get one in New Zealand, so I'm really upset by that. Anyway, the first filter to take out is um, the one nearest the front. And with this particular tool, you just tighten it up. And no my luck, these are going to be really tight because they've been on for a very, very long time. Jeez. Okay. We've got some movement, but only a bit. Don't want to break the tool. And of course, the unscrew oh, anti clockwise eventually. And what will have happened is it'd be really dry on that o ring seal. Sorry, mighty Fumbus, we've neglected you. Slowly coming. Jeez. You can see the pressure that's been applied by the tool on the actual uh, on the old filter. It's digging in there pretty big, pretty bad. Oh, wrong way. So I think maybe it's been a little bit over tightened in the past. Okay, so that one is now turnable by hand. Now these hold quite a lot of oil, so again we're going to dribble shed loads of oil all over the floor. So lots of rags, maybe a bit of cardboard, and another drip tray would be an ideal thing to have there. Okay, here goes. First filter. When I first bought this truck about 10 years ago, the uh, one of the filters actually sprung a leak. Yeah, the filter had been on for so long, it had rusted, a hole had rusted in it. So this engine's not had a very easy life. It's been neglected, I think. Right, so if you're quick, you can get the filter out and it'll still have a shed load of oil in it. We can deal with that a bit later on. Now it's time for the second one. Now the second one should be a little bit easier because there's a lot more room to work in there now. You just gotta be careful of that. Uh, that pipe just there, look. There we go. Okay. You can see how the tool's bent on the last one. Now the other thing to be careful of is there's a lot of wires around this area which you could damage 
uh, and pull out of the uh, various plugs. So you just gotta be aware of that as well. Oh, there we go, look, we've got some movement. <clears throat> Bloody hell. Sorry, that was English. Okay. They were probably a bit too tight. Oh, shit. Okay. Right. Thank you, Tool. Thanks for hanging in there. Okay, so now for the second filter. Again, anti clockwise. It's actually a lot harder with this light in the way as well, actually. That's my excuse. <sighs> there we go. <sighs> Second filter out. Okay, so one of the next jobs now is to clean up. Ugh. Poor truck. <clears throat> where the air filter, uh, where the oil filters actually fit onto the engine, we're going to get rid of all the old oil, and especially make sure there's no dirt on those contact surfaces. Now it's a good idea to leave the. Uh, the engine to drain for a few minutes around this area so take the filters off have a coffee come back by which time all the oil that's in that area would have drained away okay it feels like that one's all good it's really cool that these engines have got two oil filters because imagine how clean the oil is going to be after it's been filtered twice before it goes back around the engine again. Around this era, Nissan really built vehicles, especially these bigger vehicles, They're built them to last, you know. It's just not the same anymore. It's quite sad. There was never a better GR Patrol than this one. But getting old, you know, this is a 1992, it's now 2016, it's 24 years old, how much longer is it going to keep going? But there's still plenty out there, but they are starting to rust away, and this one is no exception to that rule, it's definitely, requires a bit of welding every year now, it's a shame, been a bloody good truck. I don't think I could. You look at the new stuff and it's just not the same. It's not built as strong. Sure, they may be more efficient and cost less to run, and well, maybe they don't actually. Things like LED headlights and stuff aren't helping that. So, just looking down because the camera angle is terrible. I'm sorry about that. That's basically what you need to do with the two ceiling rings where the filters fit, need to be good and clean, free from any dirt, and essentially ready to accept the new oil filters. And we're going to go in the workshop now and prepare those oil filters ready for fitment. Ew. This is, as always is, an oily, messy job. So the filters that I'm putting on are Ryko filters, uh, number Z115s, you'll need two of those. Um, you know I always say use genuine? Not on my own truck sometimes. Um, filter technology has come on a long way. Don't buy the cheapest, that's all I can say really. 
Do you need to use genuine oil filters? No, I don't think you do. Not on oil filters. Um, they're usually pretty good. Make sure you get one that hasn't that's got the uh, the anti drain back valve on it. You don't want all the galleries in the engine to drain empty overnight because uh, that's going to delay getting oil pressure built up when you start the engine in the morning. So all the decent ones will have that kind of stuff, and you can go on their websites and check it all out. If you haven't heard of the make, don't buy it. You know, buy something that you've heard of. Um, and that you know is well used and is not the cheapest. And these oil filters, they're big filters, so they should be reasonably expensive. Right, we need some grease. Um, one of the differences between genuine and aftermarket oil filters, uh, that I've noticed anyway, is, um, for example, with the genuine Yamaha filter that I fitted the other day to that Yamaha uh, Grizzly 450, when we took the plastic off, the o-ring seal here was already pre-greased. See? Yamaha knows what they're doing. And I'm quite sure that if you bought a Nissan genuine oil filter, again, it would be pre-greased. The other benefit of the Nissan ones, I'm sure, is the metal that they're made out of is slightly thicker, which means it's a bit more durable. Uh, these, are quite, well, these are quite good, but there's even thinner ones out there. So we're going to have to grease these manually, so just a bit of normal grease. You can even use engine oil if you want. That's fine and you don't want too much. Uh, this will just end up, any excess will end up dissolving into your engine oil anyway which won't cause any harm. That's the kind of sort of grease amount that you want on there. Not very much. Now what we'll also do before we refit these, and you can't really use a torque setting on these because we don't have any kind of tool other than the, the one that we use with our arm to fit on the end. So what does Ryko say about tightness? Do they say tightness? It's on the filter. Apply a film of oil or grease to, f uh, to the face of the gasket. They mean the o-ring seal. Obviously somebody non-English has written this. Tighten minimum uh, two-thirds of a turn after the gasket contacts the mounting pad. So they say a minimum two-thirds of a full turn once it's gone finger tight. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I tend to go about a full turn, maybe a bit more, you've just seen the ones that I've taken off, uh, and they were too tight, you know, God knows why they've got so tight. I imagine that they've been on for so long that that grease has all disappeared and the, the o-rings have become extremely dry um, on that aluminium face and that was causing them to be so, so tight. Okay, anyway, we've got the two filters, well that'll make a good picture, we've got the two filters, and we can go and put them back on the engine now, get them tightened up to specification, uh, put the sump plug back in, and we can fill that engine up with oil the correct way. Right, to the truck. Now my apologies, camera angles are terrible. Um, I was hoping it'd be a lot easier to see what's going on, but you just got to bear with me here. This is not the normal way I fit oil filters. Right, so the first one is the, is the rearmost filter. And just be careful because underneath the filter is the starter motor. And the starter motor, fortunately the grommet's still in place, but the starter motor has a battery positive on there, which we could short out onto. These are longer filters as well. Holy moly. Okay, we're going to require a bit of pipe maneuverable stuff. Okay, try again. There we go. Now the threads are not horizontal, they're very slightly pointed upwards and that gives the starter motor a bit more clearance against the filters so they're a bit awkward to get started sometimes there we go so you can see down there the new filter going on and you can see how close it is to the starter motor yeah so just be careful make sure that that gator that grommet that rubber boot is over the battery positive cable if it's not then you're going to have to disconnect your battery 
you know, you touch that and you're going to burn a hole straight in the side of that filter. And then you'll leave a new one. <clears throat> okay, so we've done about half a turn so far um, from finger tight. And I'm going to go and grab my tool and use that just to tweak it up because I just can't get the grip down there. Oh, the joys of being a mechanic. And now there's even less room to get the two in. Jeez. There we go. Okay, okay. Now, must remember, not too tight, Andy. That will do, we will stop at that point. <sighs> Jeez. There we go. Okay. Slowly but surely. Right, filter number two coming up. It's not often you've got to clamber into your car's engine bay to change an oil filter, is it? It's not quite your Renault clear. I think filter location was probably chosen for durability and protection against off-road elements Ugh. rather than practicality for changing. But let's face it, that's how it should be. Jeez, that makes up. There we go. Definitely, definitely tight enough. But definitely not over tight. These tend to get left on for a long time. And I have had problems in the past. Especially when vehicles go off-road and do a lot of heavy towing with all the engine vibrations these filters can come loose so yeah it's a small price to pay you don't want a filter coming loose dump all your engine oil seize your engine up you're stranded in the middle of nowhere no slightly too tight oil filter to guarantee that doesn't happen hey that's a small price to pay that's that's what works in my book okay uh, something back on okay so make sure it's nice and clean Initially, where the uh, sump bung's going to go. Yeah, I know we've got a bit of oil still dribbling out, but that's going to go on for months on this engine. Right. Yeah. Now this doesn't have a habit of leaking at all on the sump bung, so I tend to. Unfortunately, use the old copper washer, which is bad. I know it's my own truck. It was a customer's. It got a brand new one every single time. Okay. Now it's going to get the thick off of this oil. This is the oil that's run down from where the oil filters are. Nothing you can do to stop it, unfortunately. It's just part of doing the job. And I'll give the whole thing a spray off with the brake cleaner once I've finished, which you won't need to see to camera because I'm pretty sure you know how to clean things off a brake cleaner. So it's nasty oil, you know, you get it on your skin and just awful stuff. That's great, I've just painted my glove. Try to find a driver. Oh yeah, I'll have to just do for now. Okay, and 
tightening up, well, there will be a torque setting. I'll see if I can find it for you in the Nissan manual and I'll put it on the screen. There we go. These, these old trucks are built like tanks, so they'll take a lot of abuse. But I'll put the torque setting on the screen for you so you've got it. That torque setting would only apply though if you're replacing the, uh, the copper washer at the same time. It really be a bit tighter if you're using the wrong one. Okay, let's go top side and away from all this nasty hulled oil and uh, start putting the nice clean stuff in. Now the capacity is somewhere between 10 and 11 litres. I've never really actually bothered to find out. Um, again, I'll look in the workshop manual for you and I'll put it on the screen. So, I've chosen to use uh, this stuff, uh, Gulf Western Oil. And this comes from Auto Stop in uh, Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, it's where one of my uh, ex-students works. Well, two actually, Nathan and Corey, both from the same class, both working for the same company. And doing a great job. Keep it up, lads. Very proud of you. Um, so what have we got? Well, they recommended Top Dog XDO 15W40 CI4 stroke SL. Um, this is what's quoted for that particular engine. Uh, I'm quite happy to go with their recommendations. Most engine oils these days, uh, and obviously this is designed for a diesel engine, it needs to have all those detergents and stuff in it. Um, oils nowadays are much, much higher quality than they ever used to be and it doesn't want a fully synthetic oil in there, the engine was never designed for that. Um, this is a premium grade heavy user diesel engine oil meeting SAE 10W40 uh, standards. This product is suitable for use in any heavy duty diesel engine including American, European and Japanese passenger diesel engines. This product meets Cummins, blah blah blah, Volvo, blah blah blah, Allison, yeah, yeah okay. So it's uh, it's good stuff. So I decided to buy 20 litres. Now that probably isn't going to be, well it won't be enough to do toil changes, but it's definitely enough to do one and probably a couple of services that come in for other diesel engine vehicles as well. Um, so there you go. Right, so we need to start filling up some oil into that engine. Right, said Fred. First batch of oil, here we go. So this is getting put in in two litre chunks. And it takes a while. So there'll be lots of, lots of editing coming up. Although I could say, do check your engine oil level regularly. Because if it goes below the minimum, you do risk causing damage to your engine. How does that sound? Nah, you probably know already, already know that anyway. So I'm going to fill about, oh, about maybe nine litres of oil into the engine by the rocker cover, the filler, the oil filler, and then I'll start the engine and we'll leave it to settle for a few minutes and then we'll dipstick it. We'll see what the level is on the dipstick. We don't want to overfill and I can talk to you about why you don't overfill during the next fill. Okay, so it's pretty obvious that... Um, you need to fill up the engine with enough engine oil, otherwise you're probably going to have lubrication problems. But um, especially with a diesel engine, it's really even more important, or equally as important, that you don't overfill the engine with oil. As I once found out uh, years and years ago, when I was probably about 21, maybe 22 years old, I had a young lad working for me, and he did a service on a uh, one of our Suzuki 4x4s but we'd fitted a Nissan CD17 engine which was a 1.7 normally aspirated four cylinder inline diesel engine 1700cc and I was driving my way back for, um, for picking up some parts in Moulton just down the road and I was heading back to my home village of Sheriff Hutton and uh, I was coming past Castle Howard 
And I was I was motoring, I was on a bit of a mission down the back roads and I took my foot off the throttle pedal and uh, well the vehicle didn't slow down if anything it actually seemed to speed up and I looked in the rearview mirror and there was a plume of smoke bellowing out of the back of the vehicle and the engine wouldn't wouldn't slow down I turned the ignition key off it wouldn't turn off so I decided at that point to leave the engine in gear and slam on the brakes and that caused the engine to stall and uh, I had a pretty good idea what the problem was, so I popped the bonnet, dipped the oil level, and it was way, way, way over the maximum on the dipstick. And uh, I won't name the lad because he's a good friend of mine, or he used to be. Um, he unfortunately drastically overfilled the engine. And what happens is you get blow by on the rings, and the engine oil blows up past the rings, they're, they're all scraper can't cope, and the engine starts to burn its own engine oil and because it was burning its own engine oil as a fuel that fuel supply was really it wasn't governed anymore so the engine maximum RPM wasn't limited and those diesel engines could run away under those circumstances and uh, if you don't do something about it and stalling it in gear if you've got a manual gearbox is probably the only way of fixing it um, then eventually it's going to use up all its engine oil and the engine will die you know it'll run out of lubrication and all the components will seize up if that hasn't if it hasn't already um, you know gone terminal on its revs and, and you know shattered a piston or thrown a rod outside the block I came across a Mercedes uh, I'm sure it was a silver Mercedes van a couple of years ago it had an automatic gearbox and there were it was set up like a little camper van and um, it was sat at the side of the road on a bit of a hill and the engine was revving so hard and there was smoke pouring out the back but uh, unfortunately it was it had an automatic gearbox so we couldn't put it into gear and stall the engine and when an engine's doing that there's no way you want to try and block the air filter man if you try to do that block the air supply there's a really good chance it could just suck your whole hand in and uh, well it could be a serious problem you should never try and stop a diesel engine just by covering the intake manifold you can on a, on a petrol engine to some extent as long as it's not revving too high but diesel with all that extra vacuum that's created when it's sucking in the, uh, the air no chance don't even risk it so there you go don't overfill the diesel engine with oil Otherwise, you might find one day it won't turn off. It'll blow up in front of your own eyes unless you can get it stopped somehow. Right, we're up to six litres. We need another one of these and a half one, I think. All right. Okay, so that's eight litres. So we'll just put another one litre in. We'll get it started up. And then we'll leave it for a bit and check the oil level. I know it'll need a bit more than that though. Okay, so let's put a litre of this in. And then we'll check it. There we go. Okay, let's pop the filler cap on temporarily for now. There we go. Now, these engines have a safety cutout on them. If the oil light doesn't go out, or if it stays on for a certain period of time, then it will automatically turn the engine off. I first came across that on an old Daihatsu F50 uh, and the F55. They both did the same thing. Very, very cool. Well done, chaps. Good idea. <laughs> Okay, so leave it for two or three minutes and then use the dipstick to dip the oil level. Now the first thing you've got to do is pull it out, give it a clean, and then dip it. Uh, 
and nothing on it. So we'll put some more in. Hey, my mic. What are you doing? You put your lead on. Taking yourself for a walk. Oh, there. So we'll put this whole litre in and then we'll uh, we'll dip it again. Cool, we're nearly halfway up. So I reckon another litre. But we'll put, put it in in half litre increments. So this is the 11th litre going in. We've already put 10 litres in now. I knew it was over 10. There we go, come out with a litre. That should be enough, I reckon. Absolutely bang on. So, 11 litres of oil. Good job. So there you go. A short, or maybe not quite so short, video on how to do an oil change on a 1990 to about 1996, 97 Nissan Patrol 4.2 diesel GR. Now that's the non-turbo version, but I'm pretty confident the turbo version will be the same. Uh, although the specification of the oil could be slightly different, and you'll need to check that. But the actual amount of oil it takes probably be about the same, to be honest. Um, and I actually put 11 litres on the nail, 11 litres of oil into that engine, which is about what it's always taken every time. It's always more than 10, which is really annoying because I've got to buy an extra can. And I'm not going to buy a one litre can because it's way expensive when you buy a one litre. So I bought 20 litres and now I've got nine litres left. So I'll have to buy some more to do another oil change. Anyway. So I hope you found it interesting, informative, and if you've got any questions or comments then do leave them down at the bottom and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel and more the merrier, it does help, believe me, um, then do so and you'll receive free notifications as and when any new videos get uploaded to the channel and I'm doing probably around four or five every single week at the moment and I won't be teaching in a couple of weeks time which means that number will drastically increase for a couple of weeks um, as I want to try and get things ready with the channel for teaching steering and suspension systems braking systems and air conditioning next semester so I'd like to try and get some more steering suspension videos up on the uh, on the channel and then maybe a bit later on some stuff on air conditioning but who knows I'm not that cool at air conditioning get it cool <sighs> I don't make jokes okay all right thanks for watching my name's Andy Young I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland New Zealand cheers for now over and out